Hello friends, today I am back to share with you another last 10 books that I read. Um, I'm actually kind of behind on filming this. The Olympics have been on and I've just been like letting all of my time get consumed by watching the Olympics. So, like I said, we're a little bit behind. But, go ahead and get started. The first book I read was The Most Beautiful Girl in Cuba by Chanel Clayton. Um, I decided to pick this up back, I want to say it's been like two weeks now. Um, there was a lot of like protests and unrest in Cuba and I'm sure there still is but like the media has stopped kind of like talking about it. Um, I will leave a couple of links below if you haven't heard about this for articles that I read. Um, anyway, this is a historical fiction. Um, there are three point of views. One of them is Grace. She is in New York working as a journalist. Uh, she gets an assignment to write about this woman in Cuba who's been nicknamed the most beautiful girl in Cuba. Um, that one is Evangelina Cisneros, which I believe is a like real person that was put into a New York newspaper labeled as the most beautiful girl in Cuba. I believe I read that somewhere. Again, I'll try to leave a link down below if I can find any of this stuff again. Um, but basically, she's been imprisoned for like opposing the Cuban government. Um, and then there is Marina Perez, who is... Um, like, the Perez sisters are... Next year in Havana, when we left Cuba... That's the Perez sister. So this is another one of those. But she is... I don't know exactly... It says she's a courier secretly working for the Cuban revolutionaries. Um, she helps them... <coughs> excuse me. She helps the revolutionaries with the escape plan for Evangelina. And then... Evangelina escapes and is sent to New York where she meets with Grace and it's this is so good. I gave this five stars. Um, I think a lot of it also had to do with that I had been reading about what's happening in Cuba now. Um, and just like like how wild is it though that in 1896 the Cuban people are trying to fight a revolution to, for their freedom and even now in 2021 they are the Cuban people are still having to fight for their freedom it's absolutely like crazy to me but I did give this five stars I yeah I adored this book the cover is gorgeous um I cried a little bit at work reading this. Um, I was listening to it on audio at work and I cried a little bit. Not gonna lie. Next, I picked up A Wicked and, a Wicked and Beautiful Garden uh, by Katie McGarry. This is book one in her Witches of the Island series. Um, this is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is an adult romance from Katie McGarry. I gave this one four stars. Um... As far as the romance goes, it's kind of a second chance romance. Um, what's her name? Cassie and Orion dated previously, and he is Faye. And he, like, he told her that all of this and everything. Then they had a, um, I believe it was a car accident. And she is in the hospital, and... His mom comes and tells her that he has passed away from this accident. So she's devastated. She leaves town. She wants to like get away from all of his memories and everything. So she's working in New York as a midwife, delivering babies in this rural area. Um, and calls her and says, hey, my daughter just showed up. She's pregnant. She's having pains. Can you come look at her? So while she's at, when she gets to this house, 
the guy that has brought this person's daughter to New York is Orion. And Cassie is just like, wait a minute, you died. Like, we were in the same accident together. Your mom told me you died. Like, what are you doing here? And there's something about a prophecy or something that Cassie will lead to Orion's death. His mom is, sees visions or something and saw that happen. But they're, like, trying to find a baby the Fae are trying to find a baby that is supposed to be their next queen. So Orion needs Cassie's help, but he's also trying to, like, make up for having to lie to her that he had died. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a whole thing. Um, I gave this one four stars. <sighs> there were parts of it where I was just kind of like, like, it's a short book, but there were still parts of it where I was just kind of like, okay, like, we gotta get something. We gotta get moving along. But then... There were parts where it just kind of like mentioned something and then pulled back from it real fast. So the world building I have questions on. The um, world setup I have questions on. So I went back and forth between three and four stars. So I gave it four stars because I am interested to see what comes from it, what comes next. Um, I'm just hoping that book two has a little bit better world building or a little bit more explanation as to some of the things that they mentioned in this one. Next, I read The Ray Kess by Scarlett Peckham. I left this one unrated. Um, I think now I would give it a three star. Um, there were some things that kind of bugged me. Um, and then I got, while I was still listening to it, I got on Goodreads and started reading other reviews. And I think I let some of those opinions kind of, like, cloud my opinion. So I left it unrated at first. I think I would give it three stars. Um, so this is about Serafina. And she is a Ray Kess. And she just does whatever she wants to do. She doesn't, like, adhere to society standards of what a lady should be. Um, and then she meets Adam. He is a widowed architect with two children. And they kind of start a... <clears throat> I guess you would consider it a friends with benefits situation. Um, and she explains to him that she's not looking for anything serious, and if that's what he wants, then he should look somewhere else. And he tells her no, he wants to sleep with her, and so they start that, and then it just kind of forms from there. Um, <clears throat> so, I think the title in this one is really misleading. What am I, like, this was my main issue. When... <clears throat> so far in the historical romances that I have read, and again, that's not very many. I'm very new to the historical romance reading world. Um, in the books that I've read where the man has been considered rake, he sleeps around and he gambles and causes mischief and all of that because he wants to. Um... <clears throat> There have there may be a couple where it's been, um, how am I trying to say this? Making up for things that have happened in the past. But that is the entire reason that Serafina sleeps around. Um, Serafina, the main character, is, yes, she's very, like, sexually active and she's very open about not wanting to get married but I didn't feel like it was coming from a healthy I enjoy doing this place it was coming from a I'm already ruined so I may as well just do whatever not even whatever I want it's just do whatever that will cause almost like a shock value I guess you could say um yeah, I didn't love the whole situation. There is a trigger warning for loss of a child. It happens, like, before the book. Um, so, I just never quite, like, I want to say agreed with, but that sounds terrible as well. 
I just I just couldn't get behind Serafina's motivation for being a rakes. And I don't think that that's an accurate term for her. So that's 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 my issue. I just didn't get it. I, I'm going to stop talking about this book now. Then I read It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is her newest release. Um, I picked this up because everybody and their mother was saying the main character from this one was inspired by Alexis Rose. Um, no. <laughs> no. The situ- if you want to call the situation... The plot of the book, inspired by Schitt's Creek, perfectly fine with me. But don't you dare compare Alexis Rose to Poppy in this book. Don't you dare. Um, so, Piper. Why did I call her Poppy? Don't you dare compare Alexis Rose to Piper in this book. Um, so, Piper is a spoiled rich girl from L.A., um, at the beginning of the book, she is dumped and <clears throat> with her friend decides to throw this massive raging party on a rooftop pool of a hotel when the pool is supposed to be closed. Um, they get shut down. She gets taken to jail for the night. Her sister comes and bails her out. And then there's stepdad who I believe is like a movie producer or movie director or something. He s decides that the well, he, he really only sends Piper, but her sister goes too. Um, that they are going to go back to her mo their mom's hometown, which she has not been in since their dad died at sea. It's a fisherman town. So they go to this town. And... Brendan? Yes. Uh, Piper meets uh, Brendan. He is a sea captain. They're very... <laughs> I wouldn't even, they like don't get along at first but I wouldn't even call it an enemies to lovers because it didn't even last long enough to call it that um but Piper at the beginning of this book is just spoiled she does things for shock value she does things for attention um she like don't you dare compare her to Alexis Rose who I felt like was just living her life like, consequences be damned and whoever be damned. But she wasn't doing it just to shock people. I, like, I never got that impression from Alexis on Schitt's Creek. But that's the exact impression I got of Piper in It Happened One Summer. Now, I did give this four stars because once I switched gears of what I expected from this character, what I thought about her, I, um, I did give it four stars because I really enjoyed it. I just wish that it wouldn't ha I wish I wouldn't have gone in with that expectation. So then I read a Chanel Clayton series and I forgot to do a series reading vlog on it. So I read her Wild Aces series, book one, Fly With Me. I gave three stars. This is Noah and Jordan. They meet at um they meet at a bar in Las Vegas. He lives in Oklahoma on a military base. She lives in Florida. Um, it's them meeting, them falling for each other super fast, them doing long distance for a while. Yes, it's it was good. It's three stars. It just wasn't anything wow to me, but I did like it. Book two, Into the Blue, was a four-star read for me. Um, this one is Eric and Becca. Um... They, there's an accident at the end of book one, and they lose a member of their team. <clears throat> and Eric was the, like, wing pilot for, like, when that accident took place. So he's feeling a lot of survivor's guilt. So he takes a, I want to call it vacation, but I think it's a leave from... Uh, the military and he goes back to his hometown I think but while he's back in his hometown he meets his ex-fiance re-meets his ex-fiance and um, they didn't end on the best of terms because he just left when he went to the military and I think he left her a note or something or texted her or called her after he had already gone um, and he didn't really give her that option to 
like figure out where she wanted to be in his life and where he where she wanted him to be in her life. Um, I liked this one a lot. Um, again, it just was very kind of surface level, but it had it had a better surface than book one. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but I did enjoy this one. I gave it four stars. And finally, book three is On Broken Wings. This one is Danny and Alex. Danny is the wife of the pilot who um, was in the accident at the end of book one and passed away. And then I think it's like a year. <sighs> yeah, a year later, she like come, she went after the funeral and everything, she moved back with her parents in her hometown. A year later, she's come back to Oklahoma to sell their house and tie up all their loose ends and everything. Um, and Alex has been a friend to her, a friend to her husband, but he's always kind of secretly pined for her. I gave this one a three star because I didn't fully think that Danny appreciated Alex. Um, it felt like she was kind of just like, I miss companionship, I miss sex, and Alex is here, and we've kissed once, and he'll work. Um, I didn't think she appreciated him, and I didn't think she deserved him. So I gave this one three stars. I really liked Alex. Um, a little creepy on the pining when, in book one, when... The friend who was her husband was still alive but <sighs> and then I read Once Upon a Royal Summer by Terry Wilson. This was a super super sugary sweet gave me a toothache book about a woman what was her name Lacey and she <coughs> excuse me she works in a theme park in Central Florida where she is a princess, um, Princess Sweet Pea after like the Princess and the Pea or whatever the story is called. Um, and one day while she is being a princess, she gets called into her manager's office because there is a real life prince bringing his daughter to the theme park for her birthday. Um... And yeah, it's a romance between a real life prince and a girl who plays a princess at a theme park. Um, it is from Hallmark Publishing. Is it just? Yeah, it is from Hallmark Publishing. So it's that super sugary sweet. Um, I need it to be a movie at this point, please. Uh, book. But yeah, I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it a lot. It was exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I expected it to be. It was great. <laughs> then I read The Starcross Sisters of Tuscany by Lori Nelson Spielman. I gave this one four stars as well. Uh, so this one is, was her name Amelia? Amelia? I think. Um, she and her cousin Lucy are tasked by their great aunt who is estranged from the family uh, to like accompany her back to Italy because their family has this second born daughter curse that where they will never find love, they will never get married, or I think it's that they'll never marry their love. So Amelia doesn't, she kind of believes in the curse, but she doesn't like super believe in it. Um, but her, Lucy is, like, she very much believes in it. She's, um, <coughs> so, I don't know how to describe this without, like, spoiling it all. Um, but I gave this one four stars. I really liked it a lot. Um, I loved the dynamic between Amelia and Lucy, between Amelia and Lucy and Poppy, uh, which is their great aunt, um, between... The other family members who don't come to Italy, there was a bit of, it was a bit slow and there were a couple of slut shamey comments towards the beginning and not that this is an excuse, but I kind of see, not really why, but I, I think it was, <coughs> 
I think it was in there to show the growth that happens for the characters. Um, but it was, when I was reading it, I was kind of just like, oh, that's not very nice. That's not an okay thing to say. But yes, I did enjoy this a lot. And finally, the last book is How to Find a Princess by Alyssa Cole. And I gave this one three stars. This is book two in her Runaway Royals series. Um, so this one is Makita, who has lost her job, and she is, <clears throat> she's very, like, giving of herself to help out other people, to let them accomplish what they're trying to do, but she doesn't ever really do that for herself. And then, um, I think, I'm trying to remember how the audiobook pronounced it, Besnaria? Um, is this one, she works for a, um, like a royal investigation committee? I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, but basically, they're trying to find this, like, lost princess or lost descendant of a princess who ran away, uh, many, many years ago. Turns out they, or... Uh, Besnaria thinks it's Makita, so she goes, comes to America, and, like, she convinces her to go back and, like, make a claim for the crown. Um, there was a lot of nothing that happened in this book. Um, <clears throat> they kind of are, um, antagonistic towards each other at the beginning, which doesn't, didn't really make sense to me, considering Makita was supposed to be in this, like selfless all giving of her time and her like I don't know it just seemed like you want like they want Alyssa Cole wanted us to believe this one thing about her but it wasn't she was showing us com something completely opposite about the character um and then there was a bunch of it on there was like in the middle section they couldn't they weren't like technically approved Besnari wasn't, like, technically approved to go to the U.S. to find somebody to track, or to track down this, uh, Makita. So she wasn't, um, able to, like, fly back. She had to, uh, like, they took a, like, a, a, uh, like a shipping container boat. <laughs> I don't know the, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway. <sighs> it was just a lot of felt like nothing happening in this book. So I gave it three stars. So that is the last 10 books that I read. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought about them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Bye!